Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a multicolored sunburst in Photoshop. Now this is the result of a viewer who asked me for this video, so let's have a look and see how we're going to do it. I'll click Create New because I want to create my starburst the size of my screen. So I want mine to be 1920 by 1080, so I'm just going to select that as my size. I'm working in an RGB color. I'll click Create. Now my document is transparent, but I want to use this fill color. So let me just set that as a fill color, go to the paint bucket tool and drop that into the layer. So I'm, next up, we're going to create a new layer with the shape. But since we're using a shape, it's going to be created on a new layer automatically. So let's just go and pick up the polygon tool here. You're going to make sure that this word up here says shape. And now I'll just click in the document to create a three-sided figure. Don't worry too much about the width and height right now because it's really hard to determine exactly what you need. You just need a three-sided figure. So just click OK. This is what it looks like. Now we're just going to make it as big as we need it to be. So let's just drag it out here. Now my shape is filled with white, which is seriously unhelpful here. So let's just go back to selecting one of the shape tools. It doesn't matter which, and that will give you access to the fill. So you can always get to the fill and stroke provided you have a shape tool selected. So let's just click away from there. Let's go and place our shape where we want it. And I'm just using the smart guides here to line it up centrally in the document. So I want the tip here to be in the middle of the document. At this point, if my triangle shape is not big enough, then I can make it bigger. I think mine is not big enough, so I'm just going to stretch it a little bit. I'd like my shape to be bigger. And then I'm just going to reconfirm that the tip of it is in the middle of the document. Now, I'm going to make it a bit longer too, because it's going to have to go all the way around the document and it needs to go over this corner. So you might need to make it a little bit longer than you think it needs to be. Again, let's just double check that it is in the middle, which it is. So I have my shape layer selected. I'm going to choose layer new. And in this case, it is shape layer via copy. So I've got a second shape layer on top of the first. We'll go to edit and then we'll go to free transform. The very first thing you have to do is set the rotation point here, because if you don't, it's just not going to work. So let's just set this middle box on the right hand side to be our rotation point. That's critical. Next up, we want to rotate it and you need to rotate it a number of degrees that when you divide that number of degrees into 360, you can do it a whole number of times. There are no fractional elements. So a number like 60, for example, is really good because 60 goes into 366 times. You could use 30 because 30 goes into 360 12 times. You could use 15. I'm going to use 15. So I'm going to set my degrees here, this option here, to 15. And we're rotating around 15 degrees. At this point, the critical thing is that you have a gap between your two triangles. If you don't have a gap, your number of degrees is too small or your triangle is too big. So either way, you'll need to start over. So let's just click the check mark to commit that. Next up, we're going to do a finger contortion. You're going to hold down the Control key, the Alt key, and the Shift key. On a Mac, that would be Command and Option and Shift, and you're going to tap the letter T. And every time you tap the letter T, you get another one of these triangles. And so you're going to go all the way around until you get back to the starting point. And just check to make sure in the layers palette that every single one of these shapes is on a separate layer because that's going to be crucial to coloring them again. So now we're going to color them. And the way I'm going to do this, I'm just going to select the first one or the topmost one. I'm going to hold down the control key on a PC, command on a Mac, and I'm going to skip to and do the next one, skip to and do the next one. And I'm going to keep doing that, holding down the control or the command key until I get to the very bottom. This is going to give me three colors in my sunburst. So I now have all the shapes selected that I want to change the color of. Again, I'll go to a shape tool. It doesn't matter what shape tool you choose. And I'm going to choose another color. So for this one, I'm going to do a bright yellow. So I'm going to go for this yellow. And so you can see that we've now got evenly spaced around this sunburst yellow shapes. Then we can go back and do the same thing, but this time we're going to identify the yellow ones, which is this one here, and take the one immediately underneath it. Again, just a nice little visual. This is yellow, I'm gonna click the one underneath. I'm gonna do the same thing all the way down. 
and now I'm going to choose another color and this one's going to be orange so my sunburst here is going to be reds and oranges but you can choose any colors that you like so let's just go and get a good orange color now if you don't like that you can just keep clicking until you get something you do like so I'm thinking this one's a good color so now I have my multicolored sunburst and I can just save that and use it but what I want to do, I'm just trying to click away from here and deselect everything. What I want to do is show you how you can actually add a texture mask to this. So if we wanted to have texture in our sunburst, this is how we could do it. So what I'm going to do at this point is go back to my layers palette and I'm going to select everything that comprises this sunburst. So that's this polygon here all the way up to this one here. So I'm going to hold down shift and click on this one. So I've got every one of these polygons selected. I'm going to put them in a group by clicking here on new group. Now they're all in a group and they're all together. I'm going to add a layer with my texture because I want to test out my texture. So I'm going to choose layer, new fill layer and I'll choose pattern. I'll click OK. Now I'm going to use a legacy texture. Just let me show you where you're going to get them if you don't have them in that dialog. You're going to go to Window and then Patterns. This is in Photoshop CC 2020 and later. You'll have to open up that dialog, the Window and then Patterns dialog, and then go to the Flyout menu. And you want to make sure that you have your legacy patterns and more. I've already added them, but they're not added by default. And the Pattern Adding tool has moved in Photoshop 2020. So just be aware of that. It's a real nuisance. OK, Layer, New Fill Layer Patterns. Click OK. Now I'm going down here and I'm going to pick up my legacy patterns. So here they are. Here are my legacy patterns and more. I'm just opening it up, getting into legacy patterns. And the one I want is in texture fill. I'm going to use this one here, which is called noise. And I'm going to use it at about 100% in size. You can vary the size if you want. So I'm happy with 100%. I'll click OK. So I have a layer that is filled with the pattern that I want to use to virtually destroy the look of my nice crisp sunburst. So I'm going to go over here, just right click here and choose Rasterize Layer. Watch it in Photoshop if you're not aware. If you go and right click various other places, you don't get that Rasterize option. There's heaps and heaps of right click menus here in the Layers palette. The one you want is the one over the side here that says Rasterize Layer. So right now we have a layer with a texture on it. I'm going to pull that behind everything. I'm going to go to my group, which is all my sunbursts here and I'm going to add a mask. So I'm just going to click here on add a layer mask. Then I'm going to use this pattern in this layer mask and this is how we do it. With this group selected with its mask in place we're going to choose image and then apply image. Apply image is a feature that allows you to add things to a mask in this case. So what we're going to do is we're going to add the contents of that pattern fill layer can see here the pattern fill layer is being added to the mask. It's just a dead easy way of getting a layer into a mask. It's the simplest way probably to do it, although it looks like it would be harder than it is. At this point you can invert it. So if you want your image to be darker and block out more of the color, you can do that for me. It needs to be lighter. You can also adjust your blending. So you can, for example, decrease the opacity too. So if you didn't want this quite such a heavy effect, you could wind down the opacity of the mask here to 80%. Just experiment with the settings in this dialog to get something that you like as your mask layer and then click OK. Now this texture has only been applied to this layer, so it's not going to affect the layer below. Let's go and change this to something that's going to be a little bit easier to identify and see that in actual fact we're not making changes. Let's just go and get a really dark red for this base layer. So I'm going to fill it with the dark red. I can fill it using Alt Backspace, Option Delete on the Mac, or I can just click with the Paint Bucket tool and fill it and you can see that the texture is only being applied to the sunburst and not to this sort of dark red color underneath. I'm just going to undo that because I liked the result that I had in the first place. So there is how to create a multicolored sunburst in Photoshop. 
when you're looking at how you're going to recolor things, the mathematics of this is really important. I chose a 15 degree rotation and so for a 15 degree rotation, 15 will go into 360 24 times. So there are 24 of these triangles around this document. And so when I'm recoloring, I'm looking at some number of recolorings that will go into 24. And so three will divide into 24 evenly. It goes in eight times. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these little triangles that are yellow and eight are red and eight are orange. Well, because we've got 24 of these triangles, we could also have used something like every sixth one we could have recolored, every fourth one we could have recolored, every twelfth one or every second one. Those are numbers that all divide evenly into 24. So just getting the mathematics right will give you a better result if you want an even sunburst. Now before we finish up, I have additional Photoshop training at Skillshare.com. When you sign up for Skillshare, you'll get access to thousands of classes there, including over 200 of mine. In the description below, you'll find a Skillshare coupon, which is at least as good as the current Skillshare offer, and typically mine will be better. Please feel free to share this coupon with family, friends, and co-workers. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you've learned things about Photoshop of which you were previously unaware. If you did enjoy the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and that notification bell and you'll be alerted when new videos are released. Until next time, my name's Helen Bradley. Thank you so much for joining me here on my YouTube channel.